Hello my friends, welcome back to the PC Elitist. My name is Woodsy. I would like to start this show by thanking everyone who commented on my last video, which had been the first video for a very long time, and it was really encouraging to see how many people came back. It was really awesome uh, to come to watch the show. Very complimentary comments. Uh, a lot of people just saying, you know, glad that you're back. Uh, Frosty was the first guy to welcome me back, I think. Uh, uh, Frosty, Will Demar, Genetic Freak, also known as, known as Haxus, who I used to play World of Warcraft with back in the day. The Real Simmons, Electric, Twanger, Greg Stefanakis, who might be the genesis for this this uh episode subject actually it probably is dennis gaming on pc hyperkinetic nerd daniel thompson aviato and drearier spider a lot of these guys who i remember who used to comment on our show all the time are regulars very 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 many thanks goes out to you for coming back and leaving a comment and giving me a little thumbs up i hope I hope you guys gave me a thumbs up. But uh, anyway, um, thank you for coming back and listening. Um, and as I asked for suggestions to make the show better, a couple of you did have suggestions. Uh, actually, one suggestion and one request, which I'm going to address both of those right now. The one request, real quick, was from Drury or Spider, who wanted to know if I could put my stuff up on SoundCloud so he can listen on his commute to work. And I would definitely love to support doing that because this show is about working folk who don't have enough video games in their lives. And, you know, what would be better than me, you know, talking to you on your way to work? Uh, so I think that's definitely within the. Uh, within the philosophy of the show. I, I don't know when exactly I'll be able to do that, but I don't think it'll be a difficult process and I will definitely let you know once it's up there. Um, so, Greg, he left a comment and basically what he said was, is that he's glad I'm back, which is good. That an improvement he would like is basically more interaction with the commenters, people like you who are watching, because we have always portrayed this channel as a discussion on gaming, and it had always been a little one-sided between me and Shepard, and then people commenting. Um, I think, to a small part, Shepard and I always w were hoping we'd see interaction in the comments, but mostly you guys addressed us, and we would address you guys, and... Um, but it, the, the discussions didn't evolve as much as they should have. That was probably one of the, the faults of, the, of our just our schedule and recording that we only did it once a week. And I think that now that I'm doing this a little bit more aggressively and doing like a three, three shows a week kind of gig, that it definitely allows me to address more of what's going on in the comments, more... Uh, more topics that come up based on things that I've said or maybe even ideas that are better than mine because I try to never make the mistake that or, and try to think that I am the smartest guy in the room. I have a lot of philosophies that I that I put forth and that I think are good and solid but that doesn't mean they can't be refined and or changed. So I really like hearing everyone else's ideas, and I, I look forward to the opportunity to have more of a discussion with you guys, the listeners. So apropos of that, I was just before I started recording, um, I had a little bit of something I already wanted to talk about. Um, it was mostly just me griping really <laughs> because it was a really stressful day at work i barely got to think about video games at all i just had a few choice moments to kind of look on a few of my websites i like to check one of my favorites is rock paper shotgun i go to that site a lot because they post multiple times a day i really enjoy their commentary but uh i saw something very disappointing on there about the battlefront game which you know, here's the thing. Real quick. Uh, 
I think that for some reason, I feel that I'm good at trailers, and that that's kind of a weird thing to say. But I watch a trailer, and I I feel like that I absolutely know how much I'll probably enjoy this thing. That I could kind of see through all the marketing stuff they're trying to throw at me, and I could kind of get to the nitty gritty of what the what the game will actually be like. And I I, I just you know, I could I attribute that to the amount of experience I've had with video games, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure there's lots of people who think they're good at trailers, but uh, you know, and there's nothing about the trailers for the uh, new Star Wars Battlefront that got me excited. But there were things in it that, you know, like basically you're reskinning Battlefield to play Star Wars stuff. You know, that basic premise might lead me to buy the game. But there was a story today that I saw on Rock, Paper, Shotgun that they were going to do away with the server selection, that you're just going to be like a matchmaking service, and I'm totally out at that point. Like, I will not buy this game if I am forced into a server because, well, I don't need to really explain it to you guys. Maybe that's a a topic for another time, but (laughs) that was just like, wow, you're just really trying to get me not to buy this game. (laughs) <laughs> all right so back to greg greg uh so what's funny is, is that i just so happened right before i started doing this recording i looked back at a one of our more popular popular videos which was myself i was alone at the time and i did a recording about the thief games uh about the thief the new thief game that came out a few years ago and uh about immersion and that kind of thing and and all the faults I could see in the gameplay video of that of the trailer for that game and that actually is a good segue for me thinking I'm good at trailers this was a (laughs) this was a gameplay trailer and I watched it and I basically made a video around it pointing out all the things that bothered me about it and what I think bothers people who are in my mind frame when it comes to video games and I reference this a lot so it's I think it's good to kind of mention it again is that there is a there's an arc in games one side is sim the other side is arcade and I've thought of this in more complexity you know adding in more factors but really I mean let's keep it basic it's just linear for this particular discussion but on the one side is sim, uh, like on the way, way one side is let's t- just take your average simulator, uh, you know, a flight simulator. Everything's realistic. Everything must act realistic. Nothing is abbreviated. The way you would do it in real life is the way you do it in the video game, and that's it. And then on the other side is arcade, which let's take another flight arcade game, and you basically you know, boil down everything about flying into a few buttons and in order to just get the most simplistic experience possible. Now, there are millions of gradations in the middle depending on how much of real flying you abbreviate and how much you leave for the user to actually do. And that's where you come with your different genres of like kind of like more on the sim side and more on the arcade side i was and and ultimately ultimately in my belief and it, the the way i enjoy video games is that to reach that kind of point where i'm really immersed into a video game and and this is where the discussion kind of wraps around is i like if you're looking at that spectrum, if you're looking at like a half circle, like a like a imagine a needle on a uh, on a speedometer moving from left to right. Uh, if if all the way to the left is arcade and all the way to the right is Uber Sim, um, and the middle is elements of both, I like mine a little bit, uh, t- basically to the right of center. Um, so that's where I like it. And that's basically where I get enough sim elements to make this feel like a real place. Like, it's a, this is a real world, this is a real machine, this is me controlling a machine in this real world, but not requiring me to do math 
you know, during the game and eliminating some of the really, really tough stuff that would actually be actually be involved in uh, in f like piloting something. So that's where I enjoy it, and that's where uh, where the way I kind of define immersion is where the world around me kind of melts away and I definitely feel like I am in the world I'm playing. And I've noticed that it actually gets harder as I get older to kind of reach that, that, that sweet spot. And I think that's why as I've gotten older, I enjoy more of the sim stuff. I think that needle, if we go back to that analogy real quick, has been pushing to the right the more, the older I've gotten because it's harder for me as I get older to kind of reach that point. Um, I'm not sure why. I think I, I think there's probably a lot of reasons, and I'm sure we'll go into that eventually. But that's how I see immersion. I don't see it as 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 Greg had commented on the when I had mentioned immersion in that old video. As he was basically using it as the same way you would like. Uh, you talk about addictive gameplay where you just you just end up spending a lot of time because you enjoy the gameplay the mechanic of it and I I don't see them as the same thing like maybe some people do but ultimately I, I see them as two separate things though they could be shared at the same time you have great mechanics and immersive all at once but I think you could have something that's completely addictive just addictive gameplay and not an immersive experience. So, I mean, that I mean, the simplest uh, analogy to that would be like a board game, a really fun card game, for instance. Like nobody's nobody thinks they're the cards or they're in the in the world in the game. They are just, you know, they're enjoying the mechanics of the game. Um, and then there's how I see ultimately like video games at their pinnacle and that's why I'm kind of so obsessed with immersion that's why I'm so obsessed with with uh, VR stuff which I can't wait for that to be in my hands I've used it at GDC but uh, I want it so bad but I think the for me the pinnacle of video games there's, there's so many different ways to, to game to play actual games but Video experiences or virtual reality or immersive gameplay is something that I think only video games can do. Basically, as, as close as we can get to the holodeck from Star Trek, that's what I want. So I, I look for that in my video games is that I'm trying to get as close to that experience as possible. And I, I think that there's certain people who are just frankly not interested in being immersed into something. They just want to play a fun game. And I, I just feel like those are two different motivations and not one isn't better than the other in the, in the other. But I do think that because video games bring this very um, distinct ability of immersing a person into a world unlike anything else that has existed before that to me the pinnacle of gaming is when it does that the best so that's why I'm kind of obsessed with it because I I think lots of things can be fun mechanics to enjoy tabletop games and whatnot I think this that can happen often but I think only video games really provide us with kind of that virtual world that we could really jump into and really be a part of and so that's why I I make those distinctions and that's why I think when I say I kind of have these objective scales that I put things on that's that's what I'm pointing to because I think it's important to for games to kind of reach their their highest potential and I think their their greatest potential is in that area um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was defined. Uh, it was an old question. It was from years ago, but I just want to make sure that I start the habit of addressing people and their comments. And I'm really glad that I saw that comment because I didn't address it before. And I hope, uh, Greg, you keep commenting and listening to the channel. You know what I haven't figured out yet that I would love to figure out? Um, 
which I, hopefully I will, is how to end these videos without sounding awkward because the last video I feel I totally sounded awkward, but I really want it to not sound awkward. And this is going down a really awkward path. So, so here's what I'm gonna do. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, please thumb up this video. Uh, please subscribe if you're not if you're not subscribed. I, I guarantee anyone who knows this video is popping up is probably subscribed already. <laughs> but um, thank you for supporting this channel, and uh, I will see you guys next time.